Today, I am meeting a friend over at Lakewood Ranch. He actually owns a shop in North Carolina, and he's a YouTuber as well. He's We've done some collaborations in the past. He owns another shop in Ohio. He's in the Volkswagen Audi community. His name is Paul Barrett, and he owns Deutsche Auto Parts. He wants to come down and check out the shops, uh, see our operation, see if he can get any ideas, take it back and improve his operation. This is kind of a common thing that um, shop owners do. They'll go and visit each other's shops, take ideas back with them and try to help out. I've done it, you know, we all do it. So I didn't grab my camera and get it up, but the guys are here. They looked around the shop. They asked some questions. The manager, Peter, took them around, answered all the questions. They learned a lot. They headed over to my original store, Elite Motorworks. I had to leave them for a few minutes because I had a Zoom call to jump onto, but I'm off the Zoom call. So now I'm heading over to the Cattleman store and we will see them there. Been waiting on me. They're following you around like a, like a groupies. The car looks so good. We just want to see how it was coming in. <laughs> how are you? This is Christine. All right, so this is Rich. And Rich started out washing cars, right? And now he's a store manager. So yeah, I uh, moved down here, been in the cars my whole life. Um, luckily enough, I found Jamie, found Elite. Um, start off washing cards. I had the opportunity to become a service advisor, and then we started the production manager role. I got the opportunity to help him uh, build that and grow it, and then got the opportunity to uh, be the manager of the store. And then this is Romeo. So, Pleasure to meet you, Matt. J.W. Romeo. Yeah, Romeo's the he's the COO. He, he runs operations. Yeah, he started out being a manager of the store, and then as we added more stores, I needed somebody to help me run those. I will say this one holds a deal. This is the OG store, right? So this is where we all cut our teeth. And, and it is cool. At one point, all of us fit around that table for a meeting in the morning, you know, yeah. and our lunch and all that. So to be able yeah. to see it was right. five or six of us, we would sit around here for our morning meetings, right, on a Tuesday. And so they grew. And it was like, well, shoot, we need a bigger office and a bigger table. And it's just been a fun ride. And it's been fun to watch. Now we're up to, I think, 40-ish employees. Yeah. Nice. Just here? Uh, no, 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 total. Oh, total. Oh, Company-wide, yeah. <laughs> no, here we have uh, 10, yeah. And you started out here, what, six years ago, you mentioned? Well, I opened my shop in 2013, so it's been 11 years, but I came at this location in 20, late 14, early 15, something like that. And then it, and it was just, I only leased this one section, and then there's a whole other section next door that I ended up taking over later on, and then knocking the wall down, expanding the shop. But originally I had three lifts. And then we added a fourth. And now we're up to eight. Yes. Cool. Well, you guys want to see the shop? Yeah, absolutely. Right, let's go back. <laughs> Late nights, early mornings. Yeah, yeah. This is very different, though, from back then. Yeah, so that lift with the white BMW is the lift we did the Shrock on. Yeah, if you, yeah, if you look at the floor here. Yeah, you can see where the floor was. There was a, like a break room area. That yeah, this was. Really you could see like a doorway. Through the, That's what this some was. Of the shots, yeah. Yep, this was the doorway. This was the break room. And then a wall went all the way down the middle of the shop. We took that wall out. And now you can obviously see everything. This is right up your alley right here. Yeah. BW. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, you guys can. I love a convertible beetle. <laughs> <laughs> you have one, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so Taylor is really good with. Excel spreadsheets and creating these things for us and so he'll put up um, yeah so this is the spreadsheet he created here and so the colorations are I think the green is what he puts in there and then the rest of it auto fills I believe and then um, but yeah this is the boards that we keep it's basically a digital version of that all right we made it to Ren House uh, as you can see we do tons of Porsches uh, we've got quite a few here there was four that are completed and done ready to be picked up out front Got another Carrera over here. I'm sure we'll find some in the shop. How you doing? Hey, man, how are you? Doing good. Good, 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 good. Uh, street legal. Uh, is this a race car? It is, but it's also street legal. Is it a modified like FTF or, or, it, or you buy them like that? He bought it this way. Yeah, and there there's something about them. Like it comes with um, DOT glass on the windshield. And there's certain things to make it street legal. Yeah. It's got a wiper. Actually, cool story. This building actually used to be a church and it was converted to Ren House and then I purchased Ren House uh, sometime last year. What's up guys? Hi Jamie, how are you? <laughs> got Jonathan. Welcome to Ren Jack. House. Jack. 
yeah, customers come in here. When I first got this place, there was a wall somewhere here. And then this was a glass door and you had to walk hey, into an office and this was all walled off. So it was like very, very. So you'd walk in, it was kind of confusing. And then there'd be a, there'd be a receptionist here. Yeah, and then they'd have to call the service supervisor. They'd come out, and then they'd bring you in, or they'd bring you back there. And it was just like, I'm like, we're not, we're not doing this. And this is Rob. He's our manager here. All right, I think we'll do a quick tour. Let's go down here and check out the customer waiting lounge. Let's go over here. So customers come in here. They got the nice leather couch. There's a refrigerator, some refreshments, coffee, big TV, lots of magazines, some snacks. And then if they want to come down here, they can look into the shop. And uh, we have our bathrooms over here and then they could also check out the shop from here. So speaking of, let's go into the shop. All right, we got this Porsche up on the alignment rack. Our alignment rack is a flush mount. When it's down, it's completely flush to the ground. Uh, the doors are open right now, but this is a speed door, which is nice because the shop is air-conditioned. So I got Mike. He's our Mercedes tech. How you doing? Been doing this a long time. How long? 35 years in 2024. Wow. Time passes so fast that you don't even realize it. 35 years. Dude, that's crazy. This one here is an old Mercedes uh, 380 SL. Interesting enough, this customer says randomly the car just doesn't start. It'll crank, but it won't start. So Mike gets in it, he starts it up, starts it cold, fires right up, goes and drives it, drives great, comes back, doesn't miss a beat. While it's still warm, shuts it off, starts it, never, could never duplicate it. So he started doing some digging around. I, I put oh, it back Oh, on did you? It. Okay, he's going to take it loose. Yeah, he showed this to me and I was just, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Have you ever seen one that bad before, Mike? No, I haven't. It's pretty amazing that the car even runs. Yeah, but you said it was running great when you drove it, right? It was beautiful. Which is, I'm shocked. <laughs> that's insane. So obviously, it's got to get a new rotor and distributor cap. Okay, over here we have a Mercedes SLK 55 AMG. I'll tell you what, I worked at Mercedes when these are new, and these are some really cool cars. It's They're unique because by the time you spent the money to get one of these, you could have been buying you know, a Mercedes SL, like the bigger chassis. So a lot of people didn't buy these for that reason. But the ones that did, I'll tell you, I've driven these. These are like little rockets. These are so cool. I worked on one. We had a guy come in with a supercharged version and that thing was just probably one of the fastest cars I've driven. Brandon's working on air, condi or air conditioning, <laughs> the uh, convertible top. It's 911. Uh, what did you find on this one, Brandon? So this one, I had to go through and chase all the micro switch voltage. So it runs from the two safety switches to the limit switches and the motors. And I found that one of the motors wasn't going to a complete open. So we replaced that micro switch, got everything put back together, and now we're just making sure that the repair was successful. Cool. So at the end of the day, a bad micro switch. Yep. Nice. Cool, man. Good job. Thank you. Yeah, that's a good looking car. And then we got another. Porsche 911 Turbo over here. This one was interesting. I'll let Preston tell you about it, if I can bother you for a second. Yeah, what's up? Okay. So this guy had a uh, failure of the uh, rear engine latch, or re rear engine hatch latch here. Um, so pretty much wasn't working with the button. Uh, emergency cable was not effective because the um, cable had actually pulled out of the mechanical latch entirely. So unfortunately, uh, with the customer's approval, we had to uh, kind of break into the uh, rear engine lid here. He is aware uh, and was willing to do it. So, yeah, customer gave us approval to break into his car. Success. So, success. To do an oil change. <laughs> oh my gosh. But, Originally, just brought it in for an oil service, right? Uh, yeah, and a couple customer, cu couple customers. Yeah, an oil change, a couple concerns. Well, he couldn't get the hatch open. So, that was button wouldn't work, the release cable wouldn't work. So, we talked to the customer and told him we basically had to destroy the the rear cover to get in. Preston is in now. So obviously we gotta get that fixed and then uh, now we can change the oil. Yeah. And order new parts. <laughs> and order new parts. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. 
Ooh-wee. Black and red. Man, I don't know what it is about a red interior, but I just, I like it. What do you think about red interiors? Uh, I like it with a black car, for sure. Uh, yeah. This one's kind of cool. This one is uh, kind of built. It's got a cob tuner and meth injection. Uh, you can see the tank up front. Uh, yeah, uh, front trunk's open if you want to check it out. Oh, yeah. We got fast, fast boy parts. Methanol tank. Oh, the hood, sh hood shocks are not holding up. Very nice. It's got HRE wheels. These are cool cars, man. All right, I got a BMW 430 Grand Coupe. I have a problem saying coupe. I just say coupe. I know it's supposed to be coupe. Marco's over here doing uh, inspection, I think. What are you doing to this thing, Marco? Uh, just a quick inspection and then, well, I was told to do a pressure test on it, but just kind of by looking at it, I kind of found the cooling leak down here. Down here on this uh, water pump here. Oh yeah, you can see the crusties. Yeah, you can see all the debris and everything. Kind of just sitting there. So I'm gonna go ahead and give him a call on a water pump. It's just it's just leaking a lot of coolant. You can see all down there too. It's leaked the majority of it. Coolant leak from BMW. Who would have guessed? Cool. Awesome. Thanks, dude. All the cinnamon interior. Ooh. All right, we got Clancy over here working on the Mercedes. I think Mike's helping him out. What do we got going on with this car? Uh, a couple things: diag, oil change. What's the customer's complaint? Uh, we've got a headlight complaint and. Headlight and AC. Tis the season. It's getting hot here, so air conditioning is coming in like crazy. At the dealer, they would say that's normal. <laughs> Even though the other one is fine. I worked at the dealer for 25 years. Ago, but no. Yeah, the dealer said, oh, that's fine. It's normal. Don't worry about that. It's It'll burn off. This is a great car, though. Yeah, this is the... I own five of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mike believes in it so much, he's got five Mercedes that he personally owns. It's a good looking car. It's got shaved badges, shaved badges. Like it doesn't have any of the badges on it. I guess you got the turbos on the intake valley. So they call that the hot V, the hot steaming V. What do you think? Uh, it's pretty hot. It's real hot. <laughs> real hot. <laughs> I noticed you have, um, this seat here from Ventools. Oh yeah. Not sponsored. <laughs> Not sponsored, um, but, but yeah, no, it's a pretty cool seat. Of course, it's a little um, trick where it's foldable. I can take it around with me. Um, when I bought it, the guy told me that this lady, or there was a lady that bought it for, she bought five of them, and they took it to a theme park. So every time they sat in line or something, they just fold it up. Genius. Sit there. Yeah, you know, it's got, move, yeah you, got, with them. you got a strap, you just carry it, and then, uh, yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. It's pretty sick, I use it as myself. On one side, I think it's really cool. On the other side, I think it's really sad that we have a, a society who can't stand in line. They have to sit. Yeah. <laughs> but I would use it. Oh, yeah, no, <laughs> I would be that lazy person in society. Oh, there's your latch. There's the latch. Well, that's the actuator that failed. Oh, yeah, just busted apart. Yep, just broken. And this is the emergency release. If that's gone, this fell off the mechanical side, which is over there. So you press the button. This is supposed to pull a, on this, pull a cable to mechanically open the latch. This was not attached. Oh, I see. Yeah. It was broken. Yeah, not attached. So that's just a micro switch telling you it's closed. Yeah, it's not a Bluetooth latch. Nope. <laughs> Back together with some new parts. Okay. Sounds good. Good job. Yeah. All right, if you guys noticed, Jalissa has a desk back here with computers, almost like a service advisor in the shop. And you might be wondering, what is her position? What does she do here? Well, she is the production manager. So if you would guess in the name, she's responsible for production. So the service advisors bring the repair order. Well, they don't, we don't have paper repair orders, but the service advisors are up here. So she can communicate to the service advisors, and then she also communicates to the technicians. So she's kind of the in-between. And she also dispatches all the tickets. She keeps track of the goal board. She makes sure that when parts come in, they get dispatched properly to the technicians. It's all about being efficient, right? Yes. Okay, Jalissa makes a good point. This place used to be a church. So technically, this building's been blessed, which is the perfect place to bring your car. Right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
and she does an excellent job. Thank you. <laughs> and then right behind her here is the parts room. And so we get everything organized. She's she's a very organized person. Her desk is always clean and labeled. Like, I mean, that's this is this is why we have her because she's very professional and clean and neat, which I respect. Because not all of our production managers are that way, right, Joey? <laughs> I'm just gonna call them out. <laughs> all right, you guys got the grand tour of the shops. Tell me, uh, Paul, what was your thoughts? Uh, beautiful facility. He's really fancy. Um, yeah, I mean, if you remember last time we were here, we brought a real piece of garbage. Now we got a rental car. No spiders. No spiders. <laughs> Yeah. The spider was right there. Mm -hmm. Now look right there. Exactly. <laughs> All right. All right. See you guys.